So welcome back. In this lecture, part of the lecture, we're, we're just going to look at uh, systems equations that have an infinite number of solutions. So we saw in the previous part of this video that we can see whether a uh, system of equations has an infinite number of solutions by looking at the echelon form of its matrix. So the problem I left before the break was here is a system of linear equations. I said that it has an infinite number of solutions and I wanted you to just sit down and see if you could convince yourself that it would have an infinite number of solutions from the echelon form. Now, remember how you would do this. You take your system of equations like this, you put it into its augmented form, and then you can row reduce it and put it into echelon form. And what I've done here is I've actually done it into reduced row echelon form. I could have stopped when I got to echelon form, but later on I'm gonna need information about being in reduced row echelon form. And so let me just quickly circle where all the pivots are. I see that the number of pivots is equal to two, and the number of columns minus one, well, I have five columns and minus one, which is four. So we have that since two is less than four, there are infinitely many solutions. Okay, and that's kind of what I had asked you to, to look at before the break. So the next question you should be thinking about is, well, okay, there's an infinite number of solutions. Does that mean we're just stuck? Can we actually say anything at all about these solutions? Or can we actually get our hands or describe all the solutions to an infinite, uh, uh, to a system of linear equations with an infinite number of solutions? So to move forward, we need to introduce a little bit more of terminology. And what we wanna do is we want to classify the variables that show up in our system of linear equations. So let's just go back here a page. So we have a system of equation in two sets, in in four variables, x1, x2, x3, and x4. And what we wanna do is we wanna just categorize the type of variables that we have. So we introduce two important terms. Uh, we wanna uh, characterize those variables that correspond to pivot columns, uh, and we wanna correspond to, uh, describe those variables that correspond to non-pivot columns. So those that correspond to pivot columns, okay, depending upon which book you're looking at, Okay, it, they're either called basic variables or leading variables. And variables that correspond to non-pivot columns are called free variables. So our example is right over here, it's still on the, on the left-hand side. And so we can figure out, well, what are our basic variables? Well, they're going to be x1 and x3 because that corresponds to the first column and the third column. And the free variables correspond to the columns that don't have pivots. So that would be the x2 and the x4. So we have x2 and x4. So in our particular system of linear equations, x2 and x4 are free variables and x1 and x3 are called basic variables. Okay, now once you've characterized the type of variables that show up, what you can do is you can describe each basic variable in terms of free variables, okay? So how do you do this? Well, you take your system of equations, and here, I'll just move this over here so that you can see. We have our system of equations over here. You have your augmented matrix. And what you wanna do is you wanna put it in reduced row echelon form, like what we have right here. Once you have it in reduced row echelon form, take, take your matrix, that you found and rewrite all the equations, right? So we have x1 minus 2x2 plus x4 is equal to two. And then the second row tells me that x3 minus 2x4 is one. And what we want to do now is express each basic variable in terms of free variables. So that means you want to have a basic variable on the left-hand side and everything on the right-hand side being free variables. Okay, so we would have x1 is equal to 2x2 minus x4 plus 2. And over here we would have x3 is equal to 1 plus 2x4. Now the name free here is for free variables tells me that x2 and x4 can be anything I want. 
Okay, I can have complete freedom over what values of x2 and x4 is, but once I pick those two numbers, x1 and x3 are forced. Okay, so let me write that down. x2 and x4 can be arbitrary. Okay, so sometimes what we do is the following, is we let x2 be represented by a variable r, and let's say x4 is t. And then what we can say is that all solutions have the form, and I'll just move my screen up here. I'll write it out. We have that x1 is, is going to be 2, uh, 2 r minus t plus 2. x2 is going to be r. x3 will be 1 plus 2 t. And x4 will be t. With r and t, any element in the real numbers. Okay, so if you're not familiar with this, what this means is this is all real numbers. We've talked about that before, uh, maybe. And this symbol here means an element of. So you should read this that R and T are elements of R. And this form of the solution here is what's called a parametric solution. Okay, so this is called a parametric solution. So it actually describes all system, all solutions to our system. You can give me any two uh, values, r and t, and then I can find x1 and x3 from that information, and those four numbers together will give me a solution to my system linear equations. So as an example, let's say that I took my uh, I took my r to be 0 and t to be equal to 1. Well, that means that then that x1, x2, x3, x4, if I plug in 1 and 0 and 1 for r and t, I get that 2, 0, um, 3, and 1 is a solution to the system of linear equations, okay? So the first equation. So this gives me one specific example, okay? And one takeaway here is that if the number of free variables is greater than, is positive, then you have to have a number of infinite number of solutions. So the number of free variables in your system of linear equations tells you whether you have an infinite number of, uh, infinite number of solutions. So and if we go back over here, Really, when we have an infinite number of solutions, what, what's happening, what, what this is really trying to describe is that there's going to be a, a column, say for the example, this column right here, that's gonna to correspond to a free variable. So this is a, a different way of expressing whether you have an infinite number of solutions or not. So that's what I wanted to say about infinite number of solutions. You'll get some more practice by looking in the textbook and looking at your homework. And we'll talk a little bit more later in the course. In the, in the final part of today's lecture, we're actually going to talk about uh, a computer algebra system that allows you to do some computations to solve systems of linear equations.